Good morning all. I've bought some of these. They are cell end caps. And I've got some more here. Now they're not um, 18650 cell end caps. They're actually 32650 or 32700 or whatever length you happen to have. And I've been waiting for these um, particularly because I want to know the dimension between uh, battery centers or cell centers. So what I can do is measure it actually from that edge to that edge. And it is not 32 because of course there's a slight gap between the cells. It's more like 34 and a half. Okay, 34 and a half millimeters. And that's important to know because when I stack my cells, oh, you haven't seen the cells, have you? Well, they're in this box. Here they are. 20 of these, hmm, what are they? 32, 700, I don't actually think they're 70 across there. Um, LifePo 4, 6,000 milliamp hour or 6 amp hour, 19.2 watt hour cells. And I bought 20 of them for 120 pounds. So these were six pounds each. Um, then the seller reduced the price after I'd received them to 100 pounds. So what did I do? No, I didn't complain and try and get a discount. I bought another box. So I now have 40 of these uh, LifePo 4 32700 6 amp hour cells. And that's good because 40 is divisible by 8. So yes, this is going to be my new battery pack. Now with um, 40 cells, I could make up an 8S 5P, five of these in parallel. But I think what I'm going to do is make up an 8S 4P. That'll use 32 of the cells. And then I can make a 4S 4P for a 12 volt pack. So I'm going to have one 24 volt pack. That's the main pack that I'm going to use on my uh, solar crypto accumulation machine. And um, I'll also make a 12 volt pack so that I can experiment with how that might work on said machine. And also to do general experiments in terms of voltage, current, charging, discharging, balancing, and all that good stuff. So let's make up a little pack. How do these things go together like that? And then you might put Oh, no, they go in that way. Uh, you might have positive that end, and then you might switch it around to have negative that end. That's sort of silvered. And then positive, and then negative. And then we've got to um, put these two together, uh, like so, and push them over here. I suppose these should be the same orientation from the point of view of the um, the split there. Push that over there and we've got a nice little four cell battery pack. Now I am thinking of doing printed circuit boards to go on the end of these. I think the first one I'll do will be just to go over four cells. So it'll be a square board. And what I particularly want on that is multiple um, balance stud positions for putting little bolts on so that my wires are all not stacked on one bolt but also i want to put an acs 712 hall effect current sensor on the board now it did occur to me um, let's say these are all one polarity here these are all positives no let's say these two are positives and these two are negatives so if we've got current flowing in that direction Current flowing through the PCB could create a magnetic field, which could upset the ACS712. So I'm thinking the ACS712 would be rotated so that current flowing through it is in a perpendicular direction to current flowing between the cells. And therefore, we shouldn't get magnetic uh, distortion or interaction or errors in the current reading. That's my thought. 
Now, of course, the ACS712 is not measuring the current going between cells because there's no point doing that because uh, in a whole battery pack, the current anywhere in the battery pack is the same. So you can measure that externally just with a, a DMM, a multimeter. No, this is going to measure current coming in and out of these balance connections because I'm particularly interested in the balancing currents. How big are they with the flying capacitors balancer? How big are they with those inductive balancers? And indeed, how big are they with the balancing circuitry inside the BMS? Yeah, not very. Now, just so that I could play with these batteries, um, I've made up some little connector assemblies. So let's put that on there, put that on there. I'll need some nuts. These are four millimeter studs. So when I make PCBs for this, I'll need to uh, make the right size hole. I might make them actually five mil holes because of this dimension, or there may be tiny errors in that dimension. Also, of course, these studs may not be brazed completely central to the cells. Uh, so I might allow for a little play. So let's attach these and make up a little 12 volt pack. So that's going to mean I want one running across there. Let's attach nuts onto that. And then these are my final terminals. Oh, I need a bulb, don't I? Well, I've got my trusty 24 volt bulb, so it's not going to be very bright. But uh, yeah, there it is. So that's a 12 volt uh, pack, nice and simple. But it took a while to make these leads. I don't want to make dozens of them. No, I want to do this printed circuit board idea. I'm glad actually that these have got uh, threaded studs on both sides. I don't know whether you remember this thing that I bought on eBay ooh, a little while back now, and then the seller just mysteriously vanished. Um, this one has a, a, a sort of nut thread on one side and a stud thread on the other. But that strikes me as rather odd because you wouldn't just simply screw these into each other and make up a, a really long line of these things, would you? It would be horribly subject to flexing forces and that sort of thing. No, that's just a peculiar arrangement, having the opposite ones on each side. No, much happier with these. And um, now, of course, I've got enough of these to make up a fairly large battery pack. I think um, the headway cells, the ones that are currently on my solar crypto accumulation machine are uh, 10 amp hour and they're much bigger than these much bigger i think they're bigger diameter as well now if these are genuinely six amp hour they may not be they may be five amp hour who knows we'll find out then the headway cells i think comes to about 250 watt hours if i built the entire eight by five pack of these, I think I worked out it's more like about 700 watt hours, so not quite a kilowatt hour yet, but certainly um, I can build a much bigger battery pack than those headway cells. Yeah, sometimes this is 34, actually, that one is 35. Sometimes, and I presume this is because the studs aren't welded precisely centrally. That one's about 34 and a half. Uh, that one's about 34 and a half again. And that one's about, yeah, that's 34. So obviously I think I'm going to go for 34 and a half, but make them five mil holes in the PCBs. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So heading out to the shed to check these batteries in context and what do we have a solar panel with some sun on it yes as indicated by my sun indicator there so yes sun um oh what's the current i'm on the end of a wire here so it's 1.28 amps and i think this this smaller bulb works as a sort of 1.2 amp current limiter it's quite effective so these will be charging more slowly than would be the case without that bulb. Now I need that bulb for the moment because there's a solar charging issue, which I'll have to come back to another time. But anyway, I wanted to see how these cells look against those cells 
in context, so I'll put it by the side of them. Yes, I think the headway cells, those are the bigger cells, are a larger diameter, and that would be indicated by, well, the size of the end caps. It's hard to see there, but I mean, certainly the headway cells are almost twice the length. Um, so are these going to be genuinely 6 amp hours? Yeah, I don't really know. Right, let's do a high current test. I've got my, uh, oh, what's this? Is it an H7? I think it is. H7, 55 watt, 12 volt. Yes, now I've made this mistake before and put a 12 volt bulb on 24 volts. Uh, but this is 12 volts. Oh, yes, that lights up nice and bright. Um, yeah, really just to see if these have got the grunt. I'm sure they have. And of course, uh, when these are paralleled up, so if I do make an 8S 4P uh, battery, then yeah, that's going to be, well, 1C would mean 6 amps times 4, 24 amps. Nice. And the other thing I'm going to do with these is um, I'll just stack them out that way so that these connections are always accessible. This was done in this arrangement simply because the original bike battery had two lead acids which were similar in size to these and so the logical thing to do with these was put them end on end but the trouble is all the connections are down inside this gap you can see there's a piece of foam in there because the uh, bolts are really quite close to each other down in that gap yes nice bright sunshine at the moment this is actually allowing oh 1.47 amps through so that's probably the most it's going to allow. Yeah, the solar panel is up at 35 volts, so well off its maximum power point. So of course, if I change this bulb for the big bulb with this amount of sunshine, we should get a lot more amps. And that is three amps. So perhaps I'll leave that one on for a bit. Oh yeah, these have shot up into the 3.4s range. Yeah, so since we've got a bit of sun today and my little, oh, you can't see that, but my little um, voltage controlled relay, I can't move any of this stuff because it's all pretty rigid on the bench. 27.4 volts, that's set to trigger at 28. So yeah, let's soak up a bit of this sun, get these cell voltages up to um, 3.5 or more. I think 28 volts on my relay trigger board is when these are all at 3.6. I think I worked it out to be that. No, oh, the sun's gone in. Um, no, it's um, 28 volts is 3.5 across the board. 28.8 on that relay would be 3.6 across the board. That was it. The sun's come back out. So these are my new uh, cells, which I'm going to use to make up a battery. Now I'm going to put links in the description below to um, the seller who's selling the cells, if he's got any more. I think he had 10 sets up for sale. Uh, that's 10 lots of 20. And also these uh, 32 millimeter diameter end caps, uh, whatever they're called, array caps, that sort of thing. Yeah, those will all go down in the description below. Uh, not sure if this is gonna work. <laughs> Actually, that works quite well in reflection mode, but this is a very dark welding glass. Let's put it over the camera. Yeah, so you can see that it's not a clear blue sky today. Quite a lot of cloud. Oh, I can't see anything. I'm being dazzled. So this one was just a short video really to introduce my new, that's just not going to connect, is it, reliably? Uh, my new LifePo4 uh, cells, which I'm going to use to build 24 volt and 12 volt batteries. Uh, for my solar crypto accumulation machine. Cheerio.